Hello there, and welcome to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, I'd like to show you how to install Star Wars Battle Pod and patch the ROMs from a curved screen to a standard wide screen. When done, I'd also like to show you how to set up a standard controller, and then let's set up a flight yoke. At the end of the video, I'd like to demo the arcade cab, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Be sure to stay tuned until the end, and as always, I am required to give you this legal mumbo jumbo. This video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. Let us also not forget that this channel does not support software piracy. Please only use ROMs that are legal for you to use. No one from or associated with this channel will provide you with ROMs or ROM links. This video assumes that you have installed TechnoParrot and the needed dependencies to get the system working. If you've not, do not worry, as I do have a video showing you how to install TechnoParrot with the needed dependencies, and I will be linking to that video in the description and above for your convenience. This video also assumes that you have acquired game ROMs from a legal source. I'm going to briefly cover extracting the ROM files, as this aspect was covered in detail in the previously mentioned video. With that said, basically you need to use your favorite zip utility to extract the ROM files into the area that you wish to store your arcade files. For this video, I've placed a folder in the root of the TechnoParrot directory called ROMs, and in that folder I'll store each of my ROM subfolders and the arcade files stored within each of those subfolders. Once the extraction started, the utility took about 32 seconds to get all the needed files into place. Your time may be different as your system hardware will not be the same as mine. Everyone's times will vary, just remember to practice the patience of a Jedi. Our next step will be to open TechnoParrot and click on the hamburger menu in the top left. When we do this, we'll get a list of games known to work with TechnoParrot, and we'll need to scroll down to find the Star Wars Battle Pod Arcade. Once you find the Star Wars cab, select it and click on the Add Game option from the center-right menu. After doing so, we'll be kicked back out into our list of added games. We'll now need to map the Star Wars Arcade executable. To do this, we need to click on the game setting option, and at the top we'll have an area we can select and point to the right executable. Each arcade will have a different executable, however, you will have a helpful hint in the form of the arcade executable's name listed to help you find it. You will always find your ROM's executable in its corresponding subfolder, but it will not always be in the same place. I'll next launch the Star Wars arcade to verify that the arcade software will load and that we have no loading issues. I'm aware that some of the Star Wars cabs have a curved screen, and booting the system right now will not only tell me if the software is working but will also show me if I need to patch this ROM to make the image work with my current screen setup or not. It looks as if the cab has booted fine, but as you can see, the screen looks a little out of place. Again, this is because some of the Star Wars cabs have a curved screen as the cab is in the shape of a pod. Hence the name, Star Wars Battle Pod. This curved look can be rectified, however, as there is a patch for adjusting the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. To apply the patch, we'll first need to exit the arcade, and then exit the TechnoParrot software. Once TechnoParrot is closed, navigate to and check in the description of this very video you're watching, where you'll find a download link to the patches that I used to dewarp the visual aspects of this arcade. In truth, I did not make these patches, I found them floating in the wilds of the internet. I'm not sure who created them, but I'm thankful that they did, and I do think it's important to say that I was able to find these patch files in multiple locations. Once you've located your patches, start the download. My download took about 2 minutes, but I think that has to do with the connection on this PC. It seems to be the slowest in the house, but as I only use this PC to demo arcades, I've not bothered to fix the issue. That's my bad, I will, of course fast forward this section for time. More importantly the total file size of our patch is about 100 megabytes, so it's not a giant file, but at the same time, it's not the smallest. Your time will differ significantly from mine due to differences in connection and hardware. After you've downloaded the needed files, we'll have to navigate to the newly downloaded file, 
and we'll again use our favorite zip utility to access the patches. The two files we'll need are the two that have the .upk extension. Next we need to navigate back to our Star Wars subfolder, and once inside, find the folder labeled as SW Arc Game. Once found, enter the folder and look for another folder, this time called Cooked PC Console. When found, open this folder and copy over both of the .upk files into the Cooked PC Console folder. This will be copying over existing files. I've already backed up my originals, and I'd recommend that you do the same before patching. After patching the arcade software, I'll launch it again. This time I simply want to verify that the patch did install properly, that the game will load, that everything looks as it should, and that we are now in fact working in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. As we can see, the game did load, it looks great, and it's in the correct aspect ratio. So we'll again exit the game, and let's now spend some time inside the TechnoParrot software configuring a controller to work with this arcade. To configure our controller, we'll head back to the main menu, verify that we have the Star Wars Arcade selected, and we'll click on the Game Controller Setup option from the center right menu. The first two items that we'll configure for this game are the test and service buttons. These and our other service related items will be bound to my keyboard, and I'll be binding the test and service buttons to the 0 and 9 keys. My in-game action buttons will all be bound to my controller, and for the arcade start button, I'll simply use the start button on the gamepad. For the throttle, I'll be using the right trigger, the analog X and Y axis will be bound to the left stick on my controller, and the change view will be bound to my controller's Y button. The menu up, menu down, and the enter switch are all service related items, so again, I'll be binding them to my keyboard, and I like to use the plus and minus keys for the up and down options, and for the enter switch, I'm just going to use the enter key. For the last two action buttons, I'll be using the A and B buttons on the controller, and with those programmed in, we should be able to demo this arcade. I will be skipping the load screens and entry menus so that we can get right into the demo. With that said, between you and me, I've got to say that controlling the arcade via a standard gamepad feels okay. I've not had any real issues with being able to navigate the play fields, and I don't believe there is much if any lag on this setup at all. The system feels great and is very responsive. If you'd like to demo this arcade, and the gamepad is your only option for controlling the cab, I've got to say I don't think you'll be disappointed with the overall experience. I would like to point out that I personally did have some issues with the yoke directions, as in the past, with similar games, I've played with the reversed x-axis. So any issues you see with my navigation are because of how I used the x-axis in the past, not the cab, and not the controller. Next let's set up a flight yoke, but before we do, I'd like to thank my friend Mark for donating the flight yoke to the channel. This video, and a few others, would not be possible without your generous gifts and donations. Thank you. For the service keys, I'll be keeping those the same, and will not be making changes to them. However, I will be changing all of the arcade action keys to this controller, and I'll be starting with the arcade start button, and I'll be mapping that button to the start button on my flight yoke. Next, I'll bind the arcade throttle to the throttle on the flight yoke. I really like this option, as it mirrors the design in the original Star Wars Battle Pod. So not only does it look cool, but it also feels right. Next, let's map our X and Y axis, and we'll be binding those actions to the flight yoke's X and Y axis. We'll now bind the last three action buttons we have, those will be the change view and the two weapons buttons. All three of those I'll be mapping to the buttons on the flight yoke. With everything set up, let's boot the cab and demo these controls. As you can see, a flight yoke isn't difficult to set up, and I can say that this flight yoke feels even better than the standard game controller. I can see why people have an interest in adding them to flight games. I can also say that this Star Wars cab really does make you feel immersed in the Star Wars universe. When combining the cab and the yoke, you get a sense that you're not on an arcade but a real X-Wing. It feels great, is tons of fun, and combining the two makes for a whole new feel. In conclusion, I've got to say this is one of the all-time greats. If you've not played this cab, then run out to your local arcade and give this game a try. You'll not be disappointed, as it is well thought out and designed, the gameplay is action-packed, and it really makes you feel like you're part of the Star Wars universe. If you're like me and have an interest in preserving gaming history, then you'll have an immediate understanding of why we have to keep this cab alive. It not only scratches the itch of that 13-year-old child inside you that wants to be a Jedi, but it does it so well that you'll find yourself coming back time and time again for more. 
The detail that I've found in this game the few times I've demoed it has blown me away. The graphics all look crisp, almost as if it were right out of the movies, and all of the sounds from the music, the foreground, and the background sound all have a great level of detail to them. I'd also like to thank all of you for checking out this video, it really means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd really like to help, then hit that like button, leave me a comment, share this video with a friend, and hit that notification icon. All of those are small clicks of the mouse for you, but keep in mind that those small clicks help this small channel beat the YouTube algorithm. Thank you all, and I hope you'll join me again on my next video.